Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear, tips, inspiration, anything you need to get your photography to the next level. Now, we're brought to you by Kelby Training. Guys, this is a short show, but if you wanna be able to see this stuff 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you wanna go to kelbytraining.com. That's the place where you could learn from Calvin Hollywood, Joe McNally, all sorts of different people. This week, we've got Calvin Hollywood. Go back onto the page, take a look at this. You want to see this. This is gonna be really, really cool. Learn edgy photography. Calvin Hollywood's got a phenomenal style and he's sharing it with you guys right at Kelby Training. So go to kelbytraining.com. Now, this week we're gonna start it off with a little bit of viewer mail. John Ashmore had sent us a question. He asked us about banks on Nikon cameras. And rather than just kind of email him back, I was like, you know what? There's a lot of people that own Nikon cameras that probably have no idea that these banks exist on the camera. So we'll spend some time talking about it. Now, these things apply to things like the D800, the D3, the D3S. You also see these things on D700s and earlier cameras. So if you see something called a custom bank, this applies to you. Let me talk to you about what it is. Inside of the menu of your camera, you'll see that you have a couple of different sections here. If you go down here, under your custom setting menu, you'll see that you have a custom setting bank. And if you go to your shooting menu, you'll see that you also have a series of banks that you can use for this. So you gotta be careful about which one you're actually using. Now, what I wanna do is I want to be able to set these custom setting banks. Now, inside of here, you also have different shooting menu banks. So you have a shooting menu bank and then you have a custom menu bank, two different banks. Why do you care? Sometimes when you're working with a camera, you'll be doing some type of photography, right? You click, 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 you're doing something and your settings are set, file namings and all of that stuff, exposures, increments and things like that. And then you wanna switch and you wanna do something completely different. You don't wanna sit there and be like, click, click, uh, I gotta change, hold, hold up a second, just, right? That's frustrating. You'd rather set yourself up very, very quickly so that you can switch as fast as possible and have all of these things preset for you. So that's what these banks are for. You can dedicate a bank in your camera to hold a specific set of settings and then just switch to the banks as you need them. Now, let's take an example. Let's say that I am an HDR photographer, right? Or let's just say that I'm a regular landscape photographer, just regular photography. And I also do movies, right? I need two different settings for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the menu and inside of the menu, I'm gonna go over here to my custom setting bank. Now, I'm going into the custom setting bank because this bank regulates this right here, exposure, which is what I want. Under this custom setting bank, I'm gonna to go to custom bank A, and you'll see that there's a series of slots that are available. Let's work with the first one. I'm gonna rename bank A, and let's just say that I wanna call this one movie, M O. V, I, E. Once I have that set, I click OK. Now I have one set inside of here called movie. Now for this bank, bank A for movies, I wanna change my metering and exposure. I don't wanna use half stop increments. I wanna change all of this so that it goes to third stop increments. So my exposure compensation, exposure control, all of that stuff for me, I like to set in third stops. Why? When I'm using the camera, right, for aperture, and I'm trying to be able to control the aperture, or the shutter speed that I have, I apologize. The shutter speed of something, I need to be able to keep my shutter speed fixed in video. In video, you're either shooting in 60 frames per second or 24 frames per second. And as a general rule, in order for you to keep that video frame rate, what you wanna do is you wanna be able to double it for your shutter speed. So, if you're shooting 24 frames per second for video, you wanna keep a shutter speed of about 50th of a second. If you're shooting 30 frames per second for video, you wanna make sure that you keep your shutter speed at around 60. My problem is that I cannot get to a 50th of a second when my exposure increments are set to a half stop. It just won't let you get there. So when I'm doing video, you need to set those increments and then you have to go back and then you find 50. So, but I hate using third exposure increments when I'm doing landscape photography or people photography, any of that stuff. So I have to switch back and forth when I'm going from video to actual photography. Now, inside of here, I'm gonna go into the menu and what I'll do now is I'll set up another bank for myself. So I'm gonna go to custom setting bank 
And inside of here, let's say that on the bank B, I'm going to change this. So I'm going to rename this. And under bank B, I'll rename B, and I'm just going to call it photo, just to kind of keep it simple. P H O T. Oh, now if you don't know how to be able to rename all of this stuff, you'll see that on the lower left hand corner there's that question mark. All you have to do is hit the question mark on your menu and it'll show you what each of those things do and how to move around. It took me a little while to kind of figure that out. So now you know. Now I have one called photo. I'm going to click on OK. This bank that I have now is set for photo. I'm going to come back over here to this one section. I'm in bank B and now I'll take the exposure for this and I'm going to set it to half stop increments. So this is half, this is half, this is half. So when I'm working in bank B, I need to be able to do half stops, I'm all set. When I come over here and I want to work with movies, go to bank A, go to my exposure, that's set to third stops. So now, no juggling around, no moving. I get into a situation where I need it, I just go and I switch those banks and I'm all set. Now, this is where I think that we could take it to the next level. Michael Friedman, in an earlier video when we were talking about HDR, he said, you know what, why don't you use banks for renaming files? And I was like, Michael, that's brilliant. <laughs> Let me show you that because I thought that was really cool. Let's go back into the menu. Remember I talked to you about that there's a custom menu and a shooting menu. So I'll go into the shooting menu. I'm going to go over here to the shooting menu. Here you have a menu bank A. So let's just say that for menu bank A, I have it as default, right? I can even just call it you know, normal. I'm going to go ahead and make this one. I'll come over here and I'll call it N O R and I'll just call it norm. I'm going to click OK. Nothing changes for bank A. Now, everything stays exactly the same. I'm going to go to bank B. I'm going to rename bank B and I'm going to call bank B HDR. So come over here, H D R. Click OK. Now, with bank B, what I'll do is I'll go to bank B for HDR and inside of here, what I'll do is I'll change the file naming. Rather than have it be whatever the preset is for DSC, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go down here to this one section and I'm going to change this file name and I'm going to have it be HDR. And I'm going to click OK. Now, anything that I shoot under bank B will not be named DSC underscore whatever, whatever, whatever. It'll be called HDR underscore whatever, 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 whatever. So inside of the menu again, if I were to shoot to bank A, I've configured bank A now so that every time that I use bank A, it goes back to shooting DSC. And I thought that this was brilliant because now I could be on the field and I don't necessarily have to worry about, well, which one's an HDR, which one isn't an HDR. I can go ahead and just set up, shoot my stuff, and then go, oh, I'm going to shoot some HDR now, switch to bank B, all of the files get renamed HDR, I know exactly where they are on the computer. So, Michael, thank you so much for adding to this inside of the shooting menu. And, John, hopefully this answers questions on how to be able to use those banks on a renaming side as well as on an exposure side on your Nikon camera. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk to you guys about my experiences with the Canon 70D and the 1DX on a trip that I just did and talk to you a little bit about mentorship and how to be able to take your photography to the next level at your local community. We'll be right back. Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks. Now, I want to talk to you about mentorship and meetup stuff, but before I do, 
I wanted to talk to you guys about my experiences with these two cameras. Recently, I did a workshop out in Mexico with Joe McNally, Frank Doroff, and Joel Grimes. And I got a chance to actually bring my wife and daughter out in Guanajuato, Mexico. And I wanted to kind of try something different and start playing around with a couple of cameras. So I took these two cameras here with me. It was the Canon 70D and the Canon 1DX. So the 70D I thought was really interesting in that it was a nice light camera, right? It has more than enough megapixels to be able to handle a variety of work. And my wife actually fell in love with it. She was like, oh, this is pretty neat. And we went out and we started shooting with it and she was shooting with a 24 to 105. I thought it was really nice, right? I, I wanna do something a little bit more in depth and I wanna show you guys some more pictures with it. But overall, I thought that there were a couple of things that I thought were great. This was a game changer for me. I love the articulated display. I love the fact that I can kind of set it and do some really, really low shots by kind of moving around. So I thought that was neat. But this, I had no idea. I set myself up here and I hit the Q menu and you can touch everything. Go into this one section, you could slide and move it around. I don't know why more companies aren't doing that, but that I thought was amazing. So I had great image quality, all of this stuff, I can go ahead and I can actually shoot. Go ahead and set myself up and you can move around right inside of it using touch. So I thought that that was great. It had Wi-Fi built into it. We were playing around with the Wi-Fi. It was a great experience, but the one that really did it for me, and I gotta say, I was shocked, absolutely shocked at it, was this, the 1DX. Now, what we did here was, I'm a big fan of the Nikon D3S, right? So I shoot, I shoot Canon and Nikon both, but I hadn't played around with this. I'm a big fan of the Nikon D3S because of its low light capability. I could shoot at higher and higher and higher ISOs and not necessarily have to worry about noise. It does very well on the noise side. So it's always been the camera that I've been like, you know what, that's the camera that I go to. I'm gonna take it with me. Brad Moore, who's Scott Kelby's assistant here and a phenomenal concert photographer, came to me and he said, you know what? If you think the D3S does well, you have to take a look at the 1DX. That thing is phenomenal. So on his recommendation, I turned around and said, all right, well, I'll take this one out, I'll borrow it, and I'll go and shoot. So, oh, here, let me show you. This is where we were, this is the backdrop. This is what we were shooting. This is Guanajuato, a gorgeous, gorgeous city in the middle of Mexico. So that's the backdrop that we spent a whole bunch of days on. And these were shot on cannons. One of the things that I thought was really, really nice is I love the color that comes out of the Canon cameras. I think it's just great. It's warm. My daughter's doing a little squinch there. So I thought that was kind of neat. We even actually dressed her up in traditional Mexican like clothing, we took her out. That's what she looked like there. So it was really neat. It was a, it was a really, really good time. Uh, this was Jen kind of hanging out, taking some pictures. So beautiful city as a backdrop. Now, the part that I thought was great was shooting with Callie. I went out and we were shooting at night and I set the camera up to 12,800 ISO. I was like, this has got to be good. All right, let's just try it here. And I did a picture, I did a series of pictures actually of Cali. So here we are in Lightroom. One of the things that I like is that I can just go right into my filter and I went into metadata and rather than try to futz around and try to find the file, I just set my date to all dates. I set my camera to the camera that I was using and I set this column here to ISO speed and I selected 12,800. These were the shots that I did of Cali at 12,800 ISO and some of my daughter. But I took this shot and I'm like, are you kidding me? That's pretty cool. I zoomed in and I'm like, there is no noise on this file. So I was like, you gotta try some more, you gotta try some more. And we went and I did this shot. So this is a shot of Cali at 12,800 ISO. Now, it's a little hard to see on your screen. I'm staring at it and I'm like, this looks phenomenal. He has a little bit of a Justin Bieber meets, you know, international model kind of look. So the ladies love him. <laughs> now, what we did from there is I was like, that's a phenomenal thing. I thought it was great. The camera handled itself phenomenally well at 12,000 ISO and even higher. So Immediately, I'm like gushing, I'm sending messages to Brad, and I'm like, this is amazing, I love this camera. But, I was like, well, what is it gonna look like when it prints? 
right? When this, it looks good on a screen, but what does it look like printed? So we went out and we did a picture of Cali, right? So that's the picture of Cali that we were using. Then at the conference, I had a chance to be able to print on a 9890. So this is a 44 inch wide printer, 44 inch wide print. So I was like, I'm gonna make a picture of Cali. And we did. Oh, no, that's me checking the detail with the bald spot, right? That's pretty neat. Did a picture of Cali, 44 inch wide, and everybody loved it. So this is a ginormous print that held up very well 12,800 ISO on the Canon 1DX. Phenomenal stuff. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy it. It's a very expensive camera. If you're doing commercial work, you absolutely need to consider it. This is something that you can also rent. You can go to Lens Pro to Go. You can go to borrowlenses.com. They'll have the camera. But if you need to be able to shoot in the dark, I'm going to be doing a little bit more work with this because I thought it was astounding, the kind of work that we could do there. So I had to kind of share that. I thought it was neat. Now, another thing that I wanted to share was the entire concept of mentorship, right? Over on the Kelby TV site, right, that's where we had, you know, my, uh, Michael Friedman. That's where we had John Ashmore. They were leaving comments that support the show. Somebody else had asked, what do we do when you're not watching the show? What do we do when we're not doing any of that stuff? How do I take my photography to the next level when you're not watching this show? And I wanted to kind of leave a couple of different places for you to kind of check that out. The first of which is Google+. I'm a big fan of the community that's here, and you can find me by going to gplusrc.com. If you type in gplusrc.com, that'll bring you to my page, and I have a whole bunch of different photographers that I can share with you there. There's a vibrant community there where people can ask questions, and you can kind of get a lot of feedback on photography. From there, obviously, I'm going to tell you, go to kelbytraining.com. Kelby Training is gonna be a place where you can get a whole bunch of classes on specific sets of photography that you may do and you can get yourself to the next level there. The last one that I wanted you to take a look at is this one, meetup.com. And this is something that I would do locally, right? You can sign up for this meetup website for free. And inside of here, you can go and notice that I'm set for 50 miles of Oldsmar, Florida. I wanna find people that are into Photography. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to hit photography. These are all of the different events that are happening from groups in this area. So there's a ton of different things that you can go to. I'm going to switch over to groups and I'll show you Tampa Modeling Photography Group, 242 members. Creative Photography, 1,800 members. Modeling Photography Warner. So all of these groups have people that go out and do stuff locally on photography. I actually started a group, and my friend Kathy and I run this group called the Tampa Bay Strobus and Photoshop Collective. We have 980 members. I had no idea that it was gonna get that big. But you can go into these groups locally for free. You can sign up and you can attend events in your area and hook up with other photographers, and together you guys can take your photography to the next level on a local level. Something that I love, and it's something that I think that you should consider as well. Now. Before we go, I have a couple of things that I want to share with you. First off is the PeachBit ebook deal. If you go to peachbit.com, in, in peachbit.com, you go to Kelby TV, you'll have the Kelby TV e deal. You can save yourself 40% off of this book. All you have to do is just enter in the code Kelby TV, and you're going to save yourself 40% off of the ebook. I thought that was pretty cool. So, now the next thing that I want to leave you with is the website to watch for this week. Now, this website was brought to me by Pete Collins. Now, this is Brian Rogers Jr. And he's got a great website called Digital Art That Rocks. And he's got a great portfolio. He's done a series of images. And he's a NAP member. So he's part of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. Got a lot of interesting work. I love the layout of the website. I love what he's doing. Definitely something that's worth to watch. Just go to digitalartthatrocks.com. Now, what I want to do here is for the contest, I want you to go over to the Kelby TV site. At kelbytv.com, I want you to go to Photography Tips and Tricks. This is this section right here. So click on this, and that'll bring you to the most current show. Go to the most current show, and inside of here, scroll down to the comments. Right? This is where we got John Ashmore. This is where we got Michael Friedman. This is where we get websites for inspiration. This is your show. 
go into this one section here, put in your name, put in your email, put in your website, leave us a comment. Tell us what you'd like to see. Tell us the kinds of things that inspire you. This is your show. We want to help you for this. We will pick a person from this group and that person is going to win a pass to Photoshop World. Photoshop World, April 8th through the 10th at the Cobb Galleria Center in Atlanta, Georgia. This is a multi-day event where everybody gets together and spreads the love of Photoshop and photography. And hopefully one of you guys is gonna win a pass to this. That's it, it's pretty straightforward. Now, hopefully you got something out of this on the Nikon and on the Canon side and a little bit of inspiration. We'll see you guys next week here at Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care.